Hello, hello. We are always hearing from our clients and the people that we talk to, and actually we talk to each other about it a lot, overwhelm. There is an overwhelm in marketing that almost can't be escaped until you address it. You go to sleep, you're thinking about your marketing. You wake up, you're thinking about your marketing. You go take lunch, you think I should be marketing. And all of the things that you're doing aren't really working for you. So you're like, why am I bothering with this? That leads you to overwhelm and burnout. And that is what Claudia and I are here today to talk about. How do we get out of marketing overwhelm? So thanks, Claudia, for being here. Thank you for inviting me again. I always love talking with you. We do our, our week. We almost do every week our no marketing BS chit chat. So we're glad that we can, we're glad to bring this information to you because we really want to talk to people about you know, the realities of marketing and not the, uh, not the BS. So, okay, let's talk about marketing overwhelm. What do you see in your people? Well, what I see is 95% of the people I talk to are overwhelmed by needing to market their business and running it at the same time. Yes. So that creates a lot of overwhelm. And it's no one, no wonder because every time you open Facebook or you open LinkedIn, you have this waterfall of ads telling you to buy this product or that product that's supposed to help you to do things faster, quicker, or make a six-figure business while sipping piña coladas in a hammock traveling in the Caribbean, which is an absolute hoax. But <clears throat> when the thing that stri strikes me is why do we fall on and on and on to the trap of buying these things, mm -hmm. these shiny things? And the thing is we have limited time and limited resources as entrepreneurs. So what pushes us is looking for ways to cut the time to market. Mm -hmm. We need to get, or we and we want to get results very quickly. So that is a good thing, but because, you know, if you can do things in a shorter uh, span of time, great. But that kind of has as a downside that we tend to overcomplicate things, mm -hmm. either because we buy too many solutions and then we are short on money because we bought solutions. And one of the, examples is Absumo, for instance. They have a solution for everything, you know? Right, right, right. And you can buy at nothing very good software, but do you use it? Do you really take the time to set it up? Do you really take the time to start it? So that is one thing. And then the, the other thing is that you get stuck in, you're already overwhelmed, short on time, short on resources, and then you have all these things you want to do. So that is one of the reasons for the overwhelm. Definitely, it's a, it's a big thing in the overwhelm. And then the other thing I see is that we tend to have too many offerings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like too many services, too many products, too many. And I would recommend that you start, you play with the rule of one. One service, one promise, one client target. Get that in order, get that up and running, have it, you know, that that it's running smooth, and then add other things. But try to keep it simple, because the, the moment you start to add other things, it becomes more complicated, it requires more of your time, and it, you know, you are stretched too far to think. So one way, the, the question that I get from my clients when I tell them you have to simplify, and go to the rule of one, is that they say one day get bored because they will be doing only one thing. Mm -hmm. And then is how do I satisfy the, the various needs of my clients? Because, well, what you have to do is you create your signature system. And in your signature system, you most probably encompass everything you do for your clients. Mm -hmm. So for instance, I do buying personas. I help you with your message. I help you with your signature system. They are all part of my signature system and I can do them alone or in a package, but it's mm -hmm. always the same thing. It's, it's always the, and if I do change something, I change it in one place. I don't change it in 20 different places. Can you give us an example of that? Uh, what do you mean an example? So, so I, keep I keep hearing feedback. Hearing sorry. sorry. Um, um, where is where one thing that you could change in your signature system that you could offer? 
And then where, what, what's one thing you could change in your offer that would like satisfy your need to do something different or to meet a bigger need in your audience? Well, for instance, my signature system is a nine step process, right? Mm -hmm. And I have milestones in my, in my process. One of the processes is the buying persona, your client profile. I can offer it inside my signature system or as a standalone product, mm -hmm. but it's one thing. Mm -hmm. I can also combine it with creating your message and with creating your signature system. So it's a package of three elements, but it's always inside my signature system. So what I do is I have one whole product. So if I change the description or the things that I give, I only have to do it inside my signature system. I don't have to do it all over the place. So you're not recreating the wheel all the time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once you have that pathway, I know that the signature system is kind of like a pathway. Yeah. You start here, you get here, and these are the steps along the way. Actually, Claudia and I did mine last week. Um, so you, you're just saying like, okay, if I just wanna offer one thing, I could offer the first three steps of my signature system. Yes, exactly. And so that that is one way to reduce overwhelm because I actually did this myself. You and I had a conversation last week where I was like, oh, people want this and people want this and people want this. And I just feel like I'm completely paralyzed because I don't know how to offer all of those things. And I don't mm -hmm. want to offer all of those things. Exactly. I don't want to offer all of those things. You have to keep it simple. You know, you have to keep it manageable and, and stop thinking that if you don't have many things to offer, you, you will get bored. It's, you know, because for instance, inside, the signature system, keeping in, inside the example of the signature system, you can have clients that are pretty advanced or pretty fast in learning or have their act, you know, together. Mm -hmm. And you have clients that are starting. Mm -hmm. So in your case, for instance, you have people who has created a lot of content and they don't know what to do with that content, how to repurpose it, mm -hmm. how not to create content constantly. In the same line, you have people who are starting with content and they may want to do it in the right way from the beginning. Right, right. So you're helping both with content. What is going to change is the tools you're going to use right. with the beginner and with the advanced. That's right. It's always the same product. What you do is you adapt the tool you use. So stop thinking in terms of tools, assessments, uh, that kind of stuff, and think in terms of milestones. Mm. What is what you want to achieve with your client? Because in that way, you remain flexible and you mm. can incorporate new ways of helping your client without like you that. know, limiting yourself. But it's, yeah. it's always the same thing. And you give yeah. yourself the room to be creative Right. And at the same time, you're helping people who need help with and support with content, but you can adapt the same product and guarantee the same results, just varying the tool. But in the conversation, you don't focus about the tool. You focus about the milestone. The result. Right, right, right. You know, um, I think until we get out of this responding or reacting mode mm -hmm. that marketing will continue to feel overwhelming. For example, I'm going to be in a Facebook group because somebody told me that being in a free Facebook group and offering my services is a way to, or offering my knowledge is a way to market myself. So you spend a lot of time in these groups and you just feel like you're constantly giving and giving and giving and responding or reacting to what people are doing in there. That, that feels like a huge waste of time because it's not always, those people don't always want help or they're not ready to hire help. And so that's a place where I see people wasting time, but also reacting to people who aren't necessarily interested in becoming their customers. How, what are your thoughts on this kind of time wasting by reacting to something that's external to us? Well, what I think you first need to have, to have your business goals very defined. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do and make it measurable. I want to have five new clients by the end of September, for instance, make it and then reverse, reverse engineer it. Okay. How am I going? What do I need to find those five clients? Okay. I need visibility. Mm -hmm. I need an offer. I need systems in place to attract them. So yes. when you back engineer it, you see where you have to put your effort. And then in that concept, you go and check, okay, is this a good group or isn't this a good group? Yes. And, you know, you should use those groups more 
to test mm. the things you say and how you bring it, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, more than joining those groups to sell your stuff. Because People don't that like changes it. Changes the level of the conversation yes. that affects your expectations. Yes, you know, and selling in groups requires it's a long term game. Yes. Yes. And so, okay, that was one of the things I wanted to address in terms of overwhelm. And so what, we're, what we keep saying is if you don't have your foundations in place, if you don't know what you're trying to do goal wise, if you don't have your system, the thing that you sell, like all of this is just going to feel like you're constantly just spinning and spinning and spinning. So, the, exactly. so one of those things is get out of, get out of thinking you're selling to a group. You can be of service, but that doesn't mean you have to spend all of your time there giving and giving and giving. So I just want to shift people to that action. Definitely. The other thing is you mentioned this at the beginning of our call is this overwhelm of information. Like how many courses are you buying? How yeah. many people are you listening to? How many podcasts are you listening to? I think following too many people is kind of harmful when it comes to marketing. What well, are your what thoughts I on that? Is when I take a course that I, uh, for instance, uh, don't be jealous, but I am following a course, how to write blogs. Oh. But th this is from a girl that's called Henneke Dijstermatt, who's very good at that. And she also helps you with sales pages, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm, she goes more to the mechanical part of the blog, which is something you don't do. Mm -hmm. But my this course with her complements my membership at the Content Creator Studio. So mm -hmm. while I do a course like that, which is self-paced, all that yada, 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 I go on an information diet. Mm -hmm. So I stop looking around, I stop considering things that are similar because that plants the seed of doubt Yes. and the seed of distraction. Yes, yes, yes. So the same thing, when I start working with my coach, I enter on an information diet. I like that. So I go very focused and, you know, I, might, I, I go and look for, I do searches in, in case of things I don't understand clearly or want examples or that kind of stuff. But it's a very concrete search. It's a very concrete look for information. But when I have a course, and then I say, if I buy a course and I don't start it in the first month from the time I bought it, unless, for instance, it was an early bird. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you, okay. Then I don't buy I punish myself by not buying any other thing until I have done my course. Mm. You know, and that punishment, that self-punishment feels awful. It does. Because I end up eating. Yes. <laughs> so I actually bought a course and had my virtual assistant take it because it's a course I don't need to take, but I need the um, search engine optimization. I need all of my stuff SEO optimized. And so I bought it for my virtual assistant. And that was such a, that was such an amazing gift to be able to buy it and give it to her and have her implement it. But uh, I've done the same thing where I've bought courses because you're being bombarded all the time and marketers are so good at nailing yeah. your pain points and promising you something. But if you don't have the time to start with, how are you going to have the time to finish this course? Yes, for instance, you know, and then the other thing is how specialized, how specific is the course? Mm -hmm. For instance, Facebook ads, to give you an example. Doing a course on Facebook ads can have two objectives. One is better understand Facebook ads, adver uh, Facebook advertising, so that you can engage in a conversation with somebody who's going to run them for you mm -hmm. and understand what are you hiring and what can you get, okay? And that you can get out from the internet without paying a course. The other thing is that you intend to run your ads yourself mm -hmm. and you do a course. Mm -hmm. Then you need to understand that Facebook ads change its platform every three months or every month and a half. The moment you have this platform, you understood this platform, they change it and you're starting from scratch. That's right. So that's very specific, specific knowledge. You need to ask yourself, do I really need that specific knowledge or do I need the understanding of the tool so I can hire for my else. business? Yes. And most probably is the understanding of the tool. Right. For instance, I do search engine optimization for me and for some of my clients. Mm. And I teach them, to most of them, I teach them search and do it yourself search engine optimization. Because actually, search engine optimization begins before you start to write the first line right. of your content. Right. So you really need to understand 
as a content creator what search engine optimization is and the very basics. But I don't give them a course on statistics and Google Analytics and all that stuff. And Google Analytics is also one of those tools that is so complete that's very difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, are you really going to use all the insights? Are you really, so many of these tools are really for professionals or nerds or, you know, statistic people. Yeah. Then make this hard question to yourself. Do I really need it? You know, and even more so, if this product didn't exist, how would I solve what I'm trying to solve? Yeah, and sometimes it's hiring somebody. I know a lot of people are at the beginning stages, but if you really think about the time that you spend in these Facebook groups trying to make connections with people, the money that you spend on the courses that just sit on your um, on your on your laptop. Yeah, yes, yes. How much time and money have you wasted already getting nowhere? And then you still have the oppressive heaviness of I'm overwhelmed by marketing. Exactly. And so we all, Claudia and I always talk about to get out of overwhelm, please choose one audience, one thing to offer, one place to be. You don't have to be in all the places. We say that over and over again. You don't have yeah. to be in all the places. And I know that there's this idea of doing more and more and more marketing. Um, it's just so heavy on us. And what it causes is for us to shut down. And that is the last thing that we want for people. Yeah, and going back to the to the one platform, which is one of the wisest advices you can give. Then again, you know, nowadays you can start a business without a website. You don't you not necessarily need a website as a first step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, many of these platforms can disappear. Yes. They can change the the rules, mm -hmm. and all the time and effort you put there might be lost. That's right. So in your marketing strategy, you have to see, ideally, you have to see the social media as ways of generating traffic to your website. Yes. And see your website as your digital office. It's most probably the first thing people is going to check before they search more, more information about you, check your offerings, read more blogs. That is your website. Mm -hmm. So. If social media disappears, or uh, for instance, I remember there was a lot of people doing marketing through WhatsApp until Facebook bought WhatsApp. Okay, then people started to worry about the privacy in WhatsApp. And that is now today, for, at least for the US, not for Europe because of the GDPR, but in the US where each state has different privacy regulations, WhatsApp, a lot of people is leaving WhatsApp because of the privacy regulations. And they are moving over to Telegram and to, to the other options. So if you created everything on WhatsApp, mm -hmm. you lost your stuff. You're running the risk of losing what's keeping you in contact with your, with your clients. So ideally, use social media to move people to your website. Use it as a, you know, a support to generate traffic to your website, but make sure that your website is done as if it is your digital office where you welcome people, where there is a logic way of moving through. Like, like if you would go to, to a, a real office, you first check you're in the right place, the right street, the right uh, building number, and then you enter, you're welcomed, you et cetera, et cetera. And the website has the same function. So yes, use social media. If you don't have the money to start your with a website, and essentially, when you start, so many things can change. So a website is not necessarily your first investment, neither is a logo. I start in <laughs> social media and then move on to a platform that you own. Yes, these are all great um, reminders. The, the number one way to get out of overwhelm is to stop doing all the things. And I think people are doing all the things. And so we just want to say today, I think our last the last point we want to make is give yourself permission to back off from one thing. So if you're in a bunch of Facebook groups and you feel like you're not getting any traction or you're not making any relationships, you're not adding value in a way and that's not adding value to you, that's not a great place for you to be. If you are spending all of your time um, on reels because reels are the hottest thing, but you hate doing reels, then, then, then don't do that anymore. Exactly. If you are buying course after course and promising yourself you're going to do these courses and that will solve your problem 
it won't. It's just adding to the invisible weight. So if you what you can do is really clarify who you're speaking to, what they need to hear from you, and then get on the right platform where those people will be yeah. and speak to them in a way that they need to be spoken to and drive them to your one offer. That is the simplest way that we can suggest to you, you get out of marketing overwhelm. And if you don't know how to do it, or you have this urge of buying a course, spend that money better in a, in a coach. Yes. Somebody who sits with you, takes us time to understand your business, to yes. see what you have done so far, and to help you to sort things out. Because, you know, buying more courses and buying more stuff is just only going to complicate it. I love that. If you're going to spend money, hire somebody to actually take you through and clear everything up for you and actually, or do it for you. Yes. Yeah. I love that message. Yeah. Thanks, Claudia. How can people get in touch with you if they're ready to do their signature system and they want to know what the hell do I offer and who is my buying persona? <laughs> well, usually they don't doubt who their buying persona is. <laughs> I was going to say that that is always true. You know what? I was thinking like, Oh, how do my clients talk versus how I think they talk? I think they say, I don't know my audience, but they always say, oh, I know my audience. I just don't know how yeah. to market myself yet. The thing is, we, we work on a lot of assumptions and that is a, a, a big thing. And that comes because many of us render created our business based on our own experience. Yes. So we, we see ourselves as our clients and that's not the case. So yes, I understand when they say I know my client, they are thinking of themselves, but very few people know themselves very well. So you don't know your client. It's, the thing and is, no, there's no shame in it. There's no shame. There's no in shame. That. The thing you maybe know your client that that might be the case. But one thing that the buying persona gives you or a client profile gives you, it allows you to see your business from the eyes of your client, and that is a perspective that we many times miss how other how our clients see our business and not how we see our clients but we need the other side is how people see our business they can reach me at my site or at my email and that is bridge to more.com and two is with a figure with a number um, or in, uh, in content creator she um she i would i will say if you want to find out the holes in your marketing what you're doing that you can stop doing, get on a call with Claudia. Her first call is free. And she gives away a lot of interesting information in that first call that you're gonna just be like, oh, oh. And from there, you'll just feel so much more relief. So I highly For recommend sure. you talking with her. That I won't let you go without having solved the problem. For that you. is true, that is true. <laughs> Thanks Thank Claudia, you. we'll see you next week, my friend. Bye. Bye.